All right, second test run. Um, okay, there was lots of confusion with the battery being up there, being charged while it was running, and um, scope probes hooked up to the device while it was running, and concerns of ground loops and all that kind of rubbish. Um, I'm really not sure how much more simple I can do it than what we're doing here. The battery is now sitting by itself um, from our green wire we're coming through and we go into one side of the motor which is this side here see the wire is soldered to the brush connection and the brown one there is soldered around to the other brush connection uh, one coil we have our two wires soldered onto this one here which is going into our circuit this one here which has the other two wires soldered onto it is also going into the circuit. One acts as the generator, the other one acts as the coil shorting um, setup or bucking field. Um, inside the motor, which you have to understand is there is a bigger version, is this is what we have. We have a coil here, the steel laminated core goes all the way around. Um, so the coil um, on the bucking side, here we only have one hooked up, or one, one coil wound, but um, in this case we have the two. So when this one short, um, it sends the magnetic field around both sides of the core and into the other one. And of course the other polarity is across the rotor itself, this device here. Um, this one here is set up, so we have uh, what one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven segments um, on one side, and seven on the other side um, become magnetised of the opposite polarity. So um, that's a little bit of info. We will be actually um, starting from scratch and building this one here. Uh, next up, a larger version because we're going to drive a larger load. We're not going to build the whole device. Um, we're just going to get you started and then you guys can nut it out from there. I'm not here to um, show you how everything is done. You get to use your own brains. Um, Alright, so back to this. Scope is disconnected from the circuit. This cap here is simply in parallel with this cap here. This is a 10,000 UF cap, high current cap, um, to get rid of the pulses or the ripple we've seen across our uh, light bulb. So it um, does work quite well. We are pretty smooth now, so it means our meter will be reading very accurate end of the test uh, we will stick that light globe on our power supply there crank that up to the voltage we have across our light globe in the system our current draw should be pretty much the same that will confirm the meter is correct uh, we'll also stop swap meters like someone else wanted to see as well uh, so other than that there's not much more I can tell you about the circuit so like I said the green wire is going to one side this amp meter here is hooked up to the positive side of the battery. We go through an amp meter into the motor. Excuse me, which is this pin here that you probably can't see. So we simply connect that on there and the motor runs. Once it's up and running uh, with our light bulb on, we'll then connect up our scope. This one here is for me to hook my uh, trace onto, just simply connect to the positive. Of course the ground will be going to the battery and this one here we're simply going to put across our cap here and we can see then that the uh, scope makes no difference to the operation of the circuit and we will also be able to see that we now have a nice smooth voltage across our light bulb. So, um, oh yeah okay so this one here we forgot, uh, we simply coming out of our uh, circuit board here which is across this cap and we're simply going straight into this cap as I said hooked in parallel with that cap 
Um, we're coming off the positive side. The negative side is, of course, connected directly to the light bulb. We come out of the positive side. We're going through our meter, back out of our meter, and into the light bulb. That will measure the current going into the light bulb. Please stay on. <coughs> okay, so um, scope is all disconnected from the circuit. Battery is disconnected from our battery charger. That one's going to switch up as well. Um, so there is nothing connected to anything in regards to uh, mains, and there is no means for any current loop at the moment to take place. So uh, we will hook our motor up, up and running. Of course, no current, nothing going on the scope, so the scope is disconnected. 2.0, and it's dropping because the battery voltage is dropping. We're um, peeling off the surface charge at the moment. It will settle after a while, but it will drop because we are drawing power from the battery and it is no longer being charged as we go. Alright, so um, we switch our light on. Now you might have heard that bog down a bit harder than it did in the last test, but that's because it's got to fill this cap up as well now. Um, and our light bulb is running nicely. So that is the current draw from our battery at the moment. That is the current flowing through the light bulb. As you'll see that goes down. This way will go up because the battery voltage is going down. Contrary to what it should be. But that is how it's working. Now the other thing I wanted to show you that was in question is how come the uh, current on the motor was higher when I switched the light bulb off than what it was when we first started it. If I switch the bulb off, you'll see the current will go up and then it'll slowly come down because the motor is slowly picking up speed. Like so. Okay, so now we're going to hook up our scope to the battery. This may be a bit trick one-handed. There we have it. Nothing has changed there. Nothing has changed there. And we can now see the voltage across our battery. Off our cap. And you can see now with that larger cap, we have a very smooth light. So going in, we have 770 odd milliamps. At let's say 13 volts, our maximum voltage. And going to our load, which is our light bulb, is 1.63 amps, let's say 1.6 amps, at our 10.4 volts. And our light bulb is at 10.4 volts. So the cap has done a very good job smoothing out the pulses.
what we're going to do now is we're going to stick our fan on and we're going to have a look what happens when we have a little mechanical load um, placed on our little motor and uh, we'll be back once I get that fan on there alright so our fan is on um, we're about to start up a bit of paper on the back there for your entertainment just to show the air flowing um, of course we know it's going to draw more power and um, we may even end up with a little less available on our load but um, here we go anyway So we're drawing more power around the fan, of course. Um, nothing going to our load, but uh, have a look what happens when we add a load um, to our coil system. what happens when the motor is under load instead of slowing down when we add the load because it was spinning faster with the load it now spins slower when we add the load um, the motor because of the coil configuration gains torque and is able to spin that load a little faster and of course because it's spinning faster it will draw less current so um, now what we're going to do is we're going to hook up our globe there to our power supply get it up to about our 10.4 volts and see what uh, current it draws um, the one thing we didn't do was swap the meters around which we're going to do right now so as we know both our meters are pretty good reading the same junk that one there 
going to become oh, tangled up in the scoop. It's going to become our meter for our load on our motor. Okay, so now the meters are swapped around. Much of a uh, so let's go ahead and we'll get it hooked up to our power supply and um, we'll have a little look see at what's drawing what here. We'll back shortly. Alright, so we have about our 10.4 volts across our globe and we're drawing 1.65 amps. So um, extremely close. what we have on our generator and extremely close with current so uh, it would seem that our uh, current meter was telling us pretty much well what we have so um, not much more we can do about that or any more we can do to check our meter um, the voltage is close to the same current is close to the same um, same cap same bulb and that's about it, so no problems with the meters, uh, of course no problem with the scope showing us our voltages, and um, that works as it does. So uh, next thing to do is to um, get you guys started, I guess, for those who want to uh, build it, um, you're simply going to need yourself a universal motor, which you'll find in most appliances like vacuum cleaners, um, blenders, all that sort of crap. This one was actually out of a um, clothes dryer, larger. Um, and that's about all you're going to need. Strip it down. You will have to be careful how the coils are wound. This one was wound totally different to this one uh, because this was a multi speed motor. So it sort of had, uh, say, 20 turns here, went across another 20 there, back forward and then I added another set of windings over the top of that so this one I had to unwind all the wire and wind one single winding on uh, this side here so um, that's uh, what we'll be doing next I'll do that as soon as I get this video uploaded I'll come back and we'll start on this one um, really no modifications needed other than the coils um, if you're lucky enough to have a small one like this where the coils are two independent ones and not interwound, you're laughing. Uh, so that's it. I'll go and get this all um, joined, converted, what have you, and uh, get it up for you guys to um, have a look at. Cheers.